The Lord be with you. All right, let's see if I can. <laughs> That's all right. It's going to give me a minute to um, share with you. Do you have mint? Some of you are going to get some mint leaves. There we go. <laughs> the Lord be with you. Good morning and welcome to those of you who are worshiping with us online this morning. Uh, this is the fourth Sunday after Pentecost and we're at St. Paul's Lutheran in New Cumberland, Pennsylvania. I'm Pastor Jenny and we're so glad you're with us. If you don't mind saying hello, um, we've got some, a couple of good folks behind the wheel today, Jan Rutman and her hubby. So thank you, just say hello, and I'm sure they'll write back to you. Those of you who are sitting in the pew should be getting some little green leaves. If you don't want to chew on it, you don't have to. If you just kind of squish that mint between your fingers, it smells good anyway. It's going to be part of my sermon. So it'll help for you to have some if you are coming in. All right. Here are some of the prayer requests, and I know that there's at least one more that's coming my way. If you're online and you'd like to share a prayer request, Jan will pass that along to me. We're going to pray for uh, Bob's brother, Billy. Things are n not improving for him medically, so we're going to pray for his family as they um, walk with him. And, uh, you know, that ultimate healing <laughs> from God. And for Tracy. Is that your grandson? Your son. We're going to pray for your son, Tracy. All right, we have a guest in our midst, and he, well, he's not really a guest. He's a family member. <laughs> and uh, Linda's son is here, and he's asked for us to play, pray for the whole planet. And uh, that's usually you guys, isn't it? <laughs> Bob and Pat usually ask for the whole world to be prayed for, so we'll pray for the planet. Sandra's sister, Helene, um, we're praying for her today. Um, yesterday was the service for your mom and I heard it went very well 
but we're going to lift up uh, Lorraine again in our prayers today and you as the family, okay? As you continue your process of grief. I know it well. We're going to pray for Kathy Bopp. We've been praying for Kathy for a while. Any updates you want to share about her, your sister? Okay. Okay. When you talk to her again, just let her know we're praying for her. Gene's been in and back out of the hospital, so I'm glad to hear that he's home again. And um, we're going to keep him in our prayers as he convalesces at home. You have a son-in-law's, a daughter-in-law's mom. Okay. And what is his name? Gene Smith. Okay. We will pray for Jean. And your daughter-in-law, of course. Are there other prayer requests from the community? All right. There are a couple things going on today. Anybody around here have kids? <laughs> well, okay. Those of you who have been fathers or like fathers to guys, and girls, we thank you. Today is Father's Day, so we give thanks to all of you men who've been good parent to, parents to us. Um, so happy Father's to, Day to you, and I hope you get celebrated. In our house, my husband ran out of his cologne, so he got that for Father's Day. I hope you get something good on Father's Day. A hug from your kids is the best thing, isn't it? So, and he's doing well. Many of you asked me how Tom's doing. He's doing a lot better. That antibiotic worked like a charm. Thank God. All right. Then there is a picnic coming up, Joe, right? Is that next weekend at your house? What would you like us to do to come to your picnic? Okay. There's a sign-up sheet. Should we bring picnic chairs, things like that? Chairs would be good. And a little covered dish to share. That sounds great. It's always a pleasure to be out under that massive tree in your backyard where it's nice and cool. So we're looking forward to next Sunday. Right after, like in the afternoon, right? From 11 to 2. Thank you. All right. And now the, the last thing I wanted to share with you is that during my sermon today, you know... Um, I like to teach a little bit. Today I'm going to focus on the third article of the Creed, which seems a little bit strange for some of you who may not have grown up in confirmation class. But there's a big red book in front of you. It's our hymnal. It's got all of our songs in it. But the church also included the um, catechism in there, the small catechism. If you turn to page, like this is the back of the book, so there's very few pages left at the back of the book, and the number is 1162. That is going to show you the creed. And then you'll see that the creed is broken down to focus on the three parts of the triune God. So Article 1 is, would be um, the Father. Article 2 would be the Son. What do you think Article 3 is about? The Holy Spirit and the Church. So I'm going to be talking a little bit about that third article. So if you just kind of leave it to the side, you'll be able to um, follow along with me when we get there. Are there any other announcements that need to be shared? Yes, Miss D, you have some things to share. Would you mind coming forward and using the microphone? Because then people who are online can hear you too. I'll give you my microphone so they can hear you. Good morning. Uh, last week there was a West Shore Conference meeting and I want to uh, thank Anita and Jan attending along with pastor my understanding it was a different kind of meeting but it was a beginning and i'm hopeful that first of all these these team of ladies will continue to attend them as they come about and that they move us in a forward direction as a whole church secondly pastor gwen 
is leading Wednesday evening wine and cheese Sunday uh, when e events and the back page of your bulletin is a list you'll see that there is one this Wednesday evening they're a lot of fun you know people who have attended from uh, Zion so John and his wife and Dan and Deb attend and they've become friends of ours so you walking in you will have automatically some friends I, I tend to attend and I plan to even though it'll be 95 this Wednesday but oh, wow. it'll be a fun time I just wanted to point that this these events out if anybody else would like to join in on either of the teams um, and you would like to contact me that would be great otherwise just keep looking out for information on upcoming West Shore events yeah thank you and you can bring a bottle of wine that you like to share too <laughs> or a treat they enjoy uh, whatever kind of treats you want to bring along as well all right are there any other announcements that need to be shared with the community Pastor. yes Karen I just wanted to point out that the last hymn yes the last two lines are the fourth verse because oh. keeps going and then all of a sudden you're lost okay because there's that repeat sign over there but we don't all know that musically speaking so if you look on page 14 and 15 in your bulletin the song goes verses one, two, three, and then the last two lines, verse four. So don't try to sing them. Go back to verse two. <laughs> All right? That makes sense? And it looks like we're going to sing a couple of our favorite hymns. The first and the last hymns are songs that people from the congregation have requested. Wonderful. Thank you, Karen. All right, looking forward to the liturgy. Let us stand together as we begin our worship, calling upon God's name and making the sign of the cross upon ourselves. Blessed be the Holy Trinity. One God, the God of manna, the God of miracles, the God of mercy. Amen. Drawn to Christ and seeking God's abundance, let us confess our sin. You have a time for silent reflection before God. You may be seated, stand, or kneel as most comfortable to you. God, our provider, help us. It is hard to believe there is enough to share. We question your ways when they differ from the ways of the world in which we live. We turn to our own understanding rather than trusting in you. We take offense at your teachings and your ways. Turn us again to you. Where else can we turn? Share with us the words of eternal life and feed us for life in the world. Amen. Beloved people of God, in Jesus, the manna from heaven, you are fed and nourished. By Jesus, the worker of miracles, there's always more than enough. Through Jesus, the bread of life, you are shown God's mercy. You are forgiven and loved into abundant life. Amen. Let's stand to sing the old rugged cross.
us pray. Oh God, you are the tree of life, offering shelter to all the world. Graft us into yourself and nurture our growth that we may bear your truth and love to those in need. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated for the hearing of the word. The first reading is from Ezekiel, chapter 17. Thus says the Lord God, I myself will take a sprig from the lofty top of a cedar. I will set it out. I will break off a tender one from the topmost of its young twigs. I myself will plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain height of Israel, I will plant it in order that it may produce bows and bear fruit and become a noble cedar. Under it, every kind of bird will live. In the shade of its branches will nest winged creatures of every kind. All the trees of the fields shall know that I am the Lord. I bring low the high tree and make high the low tree. I dry up the green tree and make the dry tree flourish. I, the Lord, have spoken. I will accomplish it. The word of the Lord. The second reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 5. So we are always confident, even though we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord. For we walk by faith, not by sight. Yes, we do have confidence, and we would rather be away from the body and at home with the Lord. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. For all of us must appear before the judgment seat of Christ so that each may receive recompense for what has been done in the body, whether good 
or evil. Therefore, knowing the fear of the Lord, we try to persuade others, but we ourselves are well known to God, and I hope that we are also well known to our conscience. We are not commending ourselves to you again, but giving you an opportunity to boast about us, so that you may be able to answer those who boast in outward appearance and not in the heart. For if we are beside ourselves, it is for God. If we are in our right mind, it is for you. For the love of Christ urges us on, because we are convinced that one has died for us, therefore all have died. And he died for all, so that those who live might live no longer for themselves, but for him who died and was raised for them. From now on, therefore, we regard no one from a human point of view, even though we once knew Christ from a human point of view. We know him no longer in that way. So if anyone is in Christ, there is a new creation. Everything old has passed away. See, everything has become new. The word of the Lord. soil open to the seed of your word Lord let my heart be good soil where love can grow and peace is understood when my heart is hard break the stone away when my heart is cold warm it with a day when my lost. Lead me on your way. Lord, let my heart, Lord, let my heart, Lord, let my heart be good as soil. The Holy Gospel according to Mark, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said, the kingdom of God is as if someone would scatter seed on the ground and would sleep and rise night and day, and the seed would sprout and grow. He does not know how. The earth produces of itself, first the stalk, then the head, then the full grain in the head. But when the grain is ripe, at once he goes in with his sickle, because the harvest has come. He also said, with what can we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable will we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, which, when sown upon the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on earth. Yet when it is sown, it grows up and becomes the greatest of all shrubs, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them, as they were able to hear it. He did not speak to them except in parables. But he explained everything in private to his disciples. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. The third article of the Apostles' Creed is about sanctification, being made holy. It reads, I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, you know it, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Mm -hmm. Luther thinks that every instance mentioned in this article, the church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, resurrection of the body, and life everlasting are all gifts from God. Every part of it. Unlike the previous two articles of the creed, Luther begins the explanation of the third article, not with a confession of faith saying, we believe in God, but a statement of the inability to believe. This is what he writes. What does this mean? I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength. You see the, what does this mean part? You're following along with me in the little red book? Okay. 
I believe that I cannot by my own reason or strength believe in Jesus Christ, my Lord, or come to him. But the Holy Spirit has called me by the gospel, enlightened me with his gifts, sanctified, that means to be made holy, sanctified me and kept me in true faith. In the same way, God calls, gathers, enlightens, and sanctifies the whole Christian church on earth and keeps it with Christ Jesus in the one true faith. In, the, in this Christian church, he daily and richly forgives all my sins and the sins of all believers. On the last day, he will raise me and all the dead and give eternal life to me and all believers in Christ. This is, do you know this from, from Confirmation Day? This is most certainly true. Do you remember that? Martin Luther professes that he cannot understand or even believe on his own. Do you think that's true about yourself too? It's hard. That faith, that belief, that relationship with God is a pure gift. And it cannot be demanded. Have you ever tried to demand your faith to kick in? Kick in, faith. Right now, I'm not trusting. Kick in. <laughs> Can't demand it to do its job. Any more than you can demand a plant to rise up and grow. Looking at a plant, grow already. Jesus used parables to explain things to us. I've been speaking to you in very theological terms so far what we hold to be true, that God is mystery, and that faith and belief and trust, these two are also mystery. Why do some believe and others not? Why? Frustrating, isn't it? Why do I sometimes believe and sometimes not? That's frustrating too. I can't even demand my own self to figure things out. I can't understand my own self, let alone how faith stuff works. Yet Jesus was asked about this, you know, how does this stuff work? What is this kingdom about? And he used common things to explain it. In our gospel today, Jesus uses the story of a sower who throws seeds about willy-nilly. He just scatters them. Well, isn't that a little crazy? I've watched my husband Tom grow things. Never once has he taken seeds and just chucked them willy-nilly. He actually gets in the dirt, digs a hole, plants the seeds, and then takes some more dirt and covers it up. He doesn't just stop there, there's more. Let's continue with Jesus' story. The sower then goes to sleep and rises day and night and the seeds sprout and grow and he doesn't know how. Well, that's me for sure. All right. Again, another silly story. Tom definitely knows how seeds grow, and he's not even a farmer. He makes sure that he waters that dirt as soon as he's finished putting the seed and then the dirt on top of it. And then he also makes sure that there's the proper amount of sunlight and, of course, poop, right? That soil needs fertilizer in it. I mean, who is this sower that Jesus is talking about anyway? Then Jesus goes on to tell us that the earth produces of itself. First the stalk, then the head, then the full grain of the head. Well, that's true. We just know that the earth is bountiful in its ability to harvest. What a story. So how are we to understand when Jesus talks in riddles like this about this sower? I believe that this is the same kind of mystery that Martin Luther was speaking about as he was getting into that third article of the Creed. We cannot always understand how God works. Why do some churches have 65, 70 people in it? Like this was your question to me this morning. And ours doesn't. I mean, what's so different between one location and another where the gospel is shared and good people are doing good work for God? but we can trust that God is at work here too. God is at work forgiving us, calling us into the work by scattering seeds, by using the very gifts that God lavishes upon each one of us. God calls us from places where we languish, 
where we live in fear and loss, from grief and from failure. God enlightens us. That, that is, God lightens up the load by carrying us through the dark times. Like, like a father who cares for us, right? Anybody have good fathers that they remember? Like a father who carries us in those difficult times. Or a son who would lay down his life for us. You know which son I'm talking about, right? The son of God. Or a spirit who would take what is old and breathe new life into it. How about that psalm for today? The message of the psalmist who claims that an old age will still produce fruit. That feels pretty good, doesn't it? Some of us who are reaching our ripening age. <laughs> like, isn't fruit only good when it's ripened anyway? Sometimes even just before it's bad, that's when it's the sweetest. God can use what has ripened to provide for the next generation of growth. After talking about this sower, Jesus then goes on to share a story, that famous story about a mustard seed, which when it was sown up becomes the greatest of all shrubs and puts forth large branches so that the birds of the air can make nests in its shade. Well, this is just a silly story. Has anybody ever seen mustard? Have you ever? Well, that's why I didn't figure you guys were around mustard that much. Some of you may have seen some mustard seeds growing and whatnot. I figured it's the same thing as a mint. Have you ever seen a mint before? Okay, some of you have plenty of it. When I was a little girl, and we would come to Pennsylvania, one of my favorite treats was, was what did you guys call that tea? tea? They just called it mint tea? Or just tea, this is just a tea leaf. Is all you would call this. So she would make iced mint tea in the summer, and it was awesome. She'd send me out into her yard. I'd gather large amounts of the mint, which I could because it's spread all over the edge of her house. Anybody have mint tea that just takes over? Mint is like mustard. You don't need to sow a seed. <laughs> it really is much like a weed, just as the mustard seed is. You don't need to sow them. They both, if they're left alone, will take over as much ground as you'll let it. Why sow a mustard seed, Jesus? That's just ridiculous. Why sow a mint leaf? It's already happening. Hmm. Then this mystery of a great bush that birds can live in. Well, I have never seen any birds living in my grandmother's mint. Have you ever seen birds able to build a nest in mint? It's sort of like the same thing as uh, mustard. You can't do it. <laughs> Maybe if they live under the ground in the shade of it, but it's not like they're able to build nests. Yet this is Jesus' story. His comparison to the great kingdom of God. Jesus used parables to explain the unexplainable. The mint that we, we enjoy is pure gift. And for everybody else, too, if you chew on it. <laughs> Mustard also is pure gift. And so the kingdom of God is pure gift. These gifts do more than what they seem to do on the outside. Interestingly, mustard it has medicinal purposes. Did you know that? They've been using mustard for centuries. The seed extract has anti-inflammatory abilities and antimicrobial properties, and the greens have been used as antiseptic and disinfectant to heal wounds. And the oil of the mustard has been used topically to relieve pain. I had no idea mustard was that. I mean, I just put it on some food, I don't know. Mint, too, has been used for centuries for healing. It's been used to treat indigestion. Anybody use it for that still? It's been used to relieve irritable bowel syndrome and to calm an upset stomach and to clean a mouth. I think that's my favorite flavor for toothpaste. Yeah. Not that these items in Jesus' story are really meant to be taken literally and down to those levels, of course. Jesus used parables stories to teach, 
to compare, to engage our mind in wonder, to encourage us to trust that God is with us, even when we don't understand why this and not that. To encourage us to trust God is with us, and we don't need to worry. This God of ours continues to heal, to feed, to call us, even when we don't understand. When our faith falters or is absent altogether, it's silly to think that we can fully understand God's mercy when we can't even fathom our own behaviors and thoughts. God's mercy includes resurrection and hospitality, such as the first lesson teaches us in Ezekiel, that all birds are welcome. You know any crazy birds out there? <laughs> God says, all birds are welcome in my tree. All birds are sheltered here. All birds are cared for and fed here. God's mercy encompasses everyone and everything, just as Linda's son mentioned. Let's pray for this whole planet. Well, guess what? The whole planet is cared for by God. We need not fear. May the smell of mint or mustard remind you that God's love is as pervasive and persistent and miraculous as they are in the field. God tends to us and this creation with hope and love and tenderness, the kind that, a, that you have when you have like a loving parent on Father's Day. And then God sows seeds of hope in us that we too can scatter through our gifts, the gifts that God has given us abundantly. Enjoy your minty freshness today and ponder where God is calling you to speak, to live out your faith in trust and hope. And when you falter, remember that you are welcomed home to a table, a table where you can relax. Have you ever seen the picture of Jesus and his guys on that meal? <laughs> They're all kind of chilled, laying out, right? So God calls us to a table where we can come to speak freely of our concerns, our hopes, to be fed a meal that brings healing and eternal life. This is most certainly true. All right, well, it is time to sing another hymn of faith. This one is the reign of God like farmers, like farmers field. Let us stand to sing together. Oh, 
us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We come before the triune God to pray for our communities, ourselves, and our world. Nourish your faithful people through gifts of word and worship. Guide the church in listening to and interpreting your message of grace for this time and place in history. In your wisdom, lead us in expanding the reach of your love. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Nature sings of your love in the morning and your faithfulness at night. Sustain the holy rhythms of creation, days and seasons, hibernation and activity, phases of the moon and tides of the sea. Let these patterns assure us of your constancy. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You raise the lowly and humble those in high places. Raise up all who are victims of marginalization, discrimination, and hate. As we anticipate Juneteenth, banish white supremacy and bigotry from the hearts of all your people and remove the inclination toward anger and violence. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Tend to all who journey by faith and who wait with patience for the fulfillment of your healing promises. We pray especially for Peggy Warmkessel, Anita and Joanne Painter, Hannah, Trudy Stum, Loie Parker, Steve Nock, Edsel, Debbie Aldridge, the Holden family, Anna, Kathy Miller, Marty Pano, for Jenny's family and Paul Sheffer, Ken, Judy Smith and their family, for Bob and Maggie Fogelman, for Sonia, Shauna, Ken Lytle, Meredith Harris, John Carr, Janet Rowe, for Megan, for John Kerrigan. We lift before you Billy and Tracy, our whole planet, Lord God. We pray for Helene and Kathy Bopp and Jean. We also lift before you, Lord, those who are on our hearts. Grant perseverance to people doing physical and occupational therapy, people living with mobility concerns, and people facing chronic pain. Merciful God, receive our prayer. As you have loved us, so let us love one another. Empower fathers, stepfathers, grandfathers, adoptive fathers, chosen fathers, and fathers who've lost children to embody this gift of love for their children. When, this relation, when their, these relationships are strained or broken, bring your comfort and peace. Merciful God, receive our prayer. With gratitude, we remember the Emmanuel Nine and all the saints who are now at home with you. We lift before you the families of Jean Smith and Lorraine Rutman and all those, Lord, who are grieving. Plant seeds of their wisdom and witness in our hearts that we grow in faith until we join them in your heavenly dwelling. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive our prayers, O God, and come quickly to our aid through the power of the Spirit and the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let's share that peace with one another. Peace be with you. For those of you who are worshiping with us online today, I encourage you to say peace be with you online, and I'm sure Jan will respond.
peace be with you. Peace be with you. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. For I receive from the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus on the night when he was betrayed took a loaf of bread. When he'd given thanks, he broke it and said, this is my body that is for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to boldly pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Christ has set the table with more than enough for all. Come. sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, grant us
please stand for the blessing. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in grace. Amen. Jesus, bread of life, we have received from your table more than we could ever ask. As you have nourished us in this meal, now strengthen us to love the world with your own life. In your name we pray. Amen. The blessing of God who provides for us, feeds us, and journeys with us be upon you now and forever. Amen. the day